Hello, and welcome to this presentation on the chemical reaction of iron oxide. The chemical reaction I selected was the chemical reaction of iron oxide. This chemical reaction is found in many places where iron is present. It can be found in metal beam structures in buildings, chains and fences near oceans, and bikes left in the rain, for example. When the iron is in contact with oxygen from the air, water, or acid, it rusts. Also, salt water can serve as a catalyst and it can speed up the rusting process. However, rust is not made as quickly with dry oxygen or pure water. The reaction of iron oxide is not found in organisms because iron oxide is inorganic and toxic. Essentially, the oxygen reacts with the iron to form iron oxide. In the chemical equation of iron oxide, the oxygen and iron are known as the reactants. The iron is found in a solid metal form and is used for tools, cars, ships, and buildings. Oxygen is another reactant, and it is a colorless and odorless gas. Oxygen is used for acids such as sulfuric acid and nitric acid. It is also a key component in fire and, of course, keeping humans alive and animals alive. The iron oxide is known as the product. Iron oxide is found as a dark red powder and is used for the coloration of paints, calamino lotion, magnetic data storage, and it can be used as a feedstock for the production of steel, iron, and metal alloys. These previous products and reactants make up the chemical equation. The chemical equation is a way to describe a chemical reaction by using various chemical formulas and other symbols. The chemical equation of iron oxide is a synthesis reaction. A synthesis reaction is a chemical reaction in which two or more reactants react to form a single new substance. The chemical equation reads Fe2 Fe plus O2 reacts to produce Fe2O3, where Fe is the iron, O2 is the oxygen, and Fe2O3 is the iron oxide. Although this equation shows the reactants and products correctly, it doesn't, however, follow the law of conservation of mass because the atoms on respective sides are not equal. A way to make this equation follow the law of conservation of mass is by balancing it. In order to balance this equation, we must adhere to the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. By balancing the equation, we are making the atoms on both sides of the equation equal to each other. This applies to the equation because when the reactants turn into the products, no matter can be created nor destroyed from the synthesis reaction. Therefore, we can only add coefficients to balance the equation. The coefficients represent the amount of moles of that, reaction, of that reactant there are. Moles are a unit of measurement that is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of atoms or molecules of a chemical. The first step I did was count the atoms of each element in order to balance the equation. In the reactants, there is one atom of iron and two atoms of oxygen. In the product, there are two atoms of iron and three atoms of oxygen. The next thing I did was I put a coefficient of two next to iron in order to balance it. Next, I must balance the oxygen, but I can't because it's not possible to use de decimals of coefficients due to the non-divisible 2 and 3 subscripts. Therefore, I must add a 2 next to the iron oxide in order to make the oxygen on the product still divisible by 2. Next, I must add a 3 to the oxygen to balance the oxygen, but the iron is still left unbalanced. Therefore, I must add a 4 next to the iron in order to balance the equation. The final balanced equation reads 4Fe plus 3O2 reacts to produce 2Fe2O3. This balanced equation can be later used to calculate the product formed from the given reactants. Once we have the balanced equation, we can figure out how much product is made from the reactants. In a sample question, we are asked to find out how many moles of iron oxide will be produced when 130 moles of iron are exposed to 65 moles of oxygen in the air from the equation 4Fe plus 3O2 reacts to produce 2Fe2O3. In this problem, we will have to find the limiting reactant between iron and oxygen. The limiting reactant is the reactant that determines how much product will be made. For example, if you only have so much of one reactant but an abundance of another reactant, 
you can only use the reactant you have the least amount of. The first step is to find the limiting reactant by creating a table in order to figure out how much of the reactant is needed. We are finding the ratio of, of oxygen to iron in order to find the limiting reactant. We put 130 moles of Fe in the top left because that's the reactant we're using. You can use any reactant and it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Then in the top middle box, I put 3 moles of O2 because that's how much oxygen is in the balanced equation. No, and then I put 4 moles of iron in the bottom middle because again, that's the amount of iron in, this, in the balanced equation. The next step is I multiply 130 moles of iron times 3 to get 390. Then I divide 390 by 4 to get 97.5 moles of oxygen. So what does this mean? It means that 97.5 moles of oxygen is the amount of moles of oxygen we need to react with 130 moles of iron. However, we only have 65. We don't have enough oxygen for 97.5 moles. So we can only use 65. Therefore, oxygen is the limiting reactant. Therefore, the next step is to find the amount of iron an oxide made. I must use the amount of the limiting reactant because that's the minimum amount of reactant I have to fulfill the ratio between the reactants. So then I put 65 moles of oxygen in the top left, 2 moles of iron oxide in the top middle, 3 moles of oxygen in the bottom middle. Lastly, I multiply 65 by 2 and divide it by 3 to get 43.33 moles of iron oxide, that are, which is made from the products given. Therefore, 43.33 moles of iron oxide are produced in the specific chemical reaction. So, I would like to thank you for listening to this presentation, and I hope you gained a lot of knowledge pertaining to the reaction of iron oxide, and un I hope you understand how each topic connects to the other topics. Thank you.